On today's video, we're going to be doing something a little different, and I think I say that pretty much every single intro of every video, but on today's video, we're going to be talking about something really important, and it doesn't have to do with medicine. It actually involves everything outside of medicine, and that is my five hobbies that I enjoy outside of medicine. Let's go. So the first hobby I have outside of medicine is investing in stocks. May not be something you thought I was gonna say. But this all started back in my intern year. I remember we used to have a TV in the lounge of my intern year, and then I would watch CNBC most of the day. It would have a ticker at the bottom of the screen. They would be talking about stocks all day long. So in between writing orders and any downtime we had, I would just sit there and watch what's happening in the stock market. And I guess it kind of triggered some business-esque mindset that I used to have in college because as you all know, I majored in economics in undergrad, not medicine as some of you may think. I went back to school for medicine, but that's besides the point. I majored in economics and I've always enjoyed business. So I had no idea at the time how to invest in stocks or really what to do, but I figured, you know, I'm a doctor. So many people out there invest in stocks. I could probably figure it out, right? So that's what I did. So like anything in medicine, you do a little research you start dabbling a little bit here and there, and next thing you know, you're putting out some trades. But luckily, a little app called Robinhood came out about the time my intern year was going on. I think it was like five years ago or so. So I started with that app, and I still use the app today and graduated to bigger, larger uh, platforms, but, but I still use that app. This is not sponsored by Robinhood, but if you use the link in my description, when you sign up, you can actually get a free stock. And so when you sign up, we both get a free stock and it's kind of cool because a few people have done it now. Once you all sign up, I like have to play this little game and I scratch off one of the stocks and sometimes it's like a five, six, seven dollar stock. And one of the times I got one free share of Apple, which is like $118. So you could get that too. It's kind of cool if you want to sign up. So use the link in my description if you want. No pressure. So I didn't do too much day trading per se because at the end of the day, I'm working a full-time job and day trading in itself is a full-time job, but it was just something that I was interested in and I still, on my days off, will watch CNBC and check out how the market's doing and sometimes trade accordingly. Just kind of fun to me. The second hobby I enjoy outside of medicine is, you may have guessed by this behind me, is cocktail making. So this whole process or my love for cocktails grew way back in college. That actually stemmed from this bartending championship, the world bartending championship I watched in high school where they would like flare bartend. Hold on. And Gerardo would kill me if I did this. Oh shit. Still got it. So they used to flip bottles around like that, and I really got enthralled with it for some reason. Started working at a country club as a bartender, and then when I went to college, I ended up bartending there as well, which I think I talked about this on one of my bartending videos that I put on my channel, link up here. So I started in college just pouring the usual college drink, whiskey and Coke, rum and Coke, vodka soda, margarita, that kind of stuff. And then as my palate matured along with me, I've started enjoying other cocktails and kind of refined cocktails and or expensive cocktails, if you will. And when I moved to New York five plus years ago, originally for intern year, I started exploring all the cocktail bars here and it's become kind of this like phenomena that everybody has to have good cocktails now. And it's cool. I mean, it's like cooking, you know, it's like making a good steak. No two cocktails are the same and everybody has their unique way of doing it. And it's kind of cool to explore and try out. So that hobby has grown into what it is now. So now I will also go to restaurants and try out their like cocktail making classes and see what they kind of do and try Try different recipes, try different liquors, try different gins, which is my new thing. I like Negronis a lot. And also I'm a huge fan of bourbon, which you saw in my last video. I really appreciate the history behind the bourbon and it all stems from these like long traditions a hundred or so years ago. And it's kind of cool. So I like the history aspect of it, but also I enjoy the cocktail. So it's fun. The only way I can describe it is like cooking, making cocktails and cooking. And they go hand in hand. So the next hobby I enjoy outside of medicine is, unfortunately, something I can't do at the moment, and that is traveling. So Andrea Anna and I, which if you followed me for a while now, you know that we love to travel 
as much as humanly possible. I have a rule, anytime you have a weekend off in residency, we have to go somewhere. Sometimes we stay around here, but most of the time we would try to just get the heck out of Dodge, go somewhere cool, go somewhere fun, and just enjoy traveling. But unfortunately, COVID has kind of put a damper on that situation. So we haven't traveled in the better part of a year, and honestly, I'm kind of getting that itch to go somewhere and explore new things and be out of your comfort zone, which is all the reasons I love traveling, but we just can't do it right now, which is unfortunate because that's one of our favorite things to do together. In fact, we love it so much, we kind of don't get each other presents anymore for birthdays or Christmas or whatever. We will just go travel somewhere together because in our eyes, sharing an experience together is way much more fun than you know getting someone a necklace or something like that. The experiences are worth everything to us. It's also weird too because, as you know, Andriana is Croatian and we try to travel to Croatia at least once a year. Haven't been there in two years, really missing out over there. And I'm really looking forward to hopefully, hopefully, hopefully 2021 being our year to get back on the plane and travel somewhere we haven't been. This COVID stuff is really putting a damper on everything. The fourth hobby I enjoy doing outside of medicine is pretty recent now, actually. And that hobby is collecting sneakers, which, as I said, this is a pretty new hobby, and I don't know why I even got into this hobby to begin with. I really have no idea. I'm one of those people who will keep a pair of shoes or sneakers for like, ever. I take really good care of them, I keep them clean, I wash them multiple times, and I never get a new pair. But then the more I got into fashion, the more I started going places, and the more I started doing things, you kind of need a sneaker for like every occasion. So I just started getting new sneakers. And then I realized that there's a lot of value in certain limited release sneakers. So I started doing my research as usual, looking online, watching a ton of YouTube videos, and then I started investing in sneakers. And there are some sneakers I've bought and won raffles too, in which they're like a hundred bucks and you resell them for like a thousand bucks, which is crazy, right? Like who, who pays a thousand dollars for a Nike sneaker? It's it's unbelievable to me. I actually thought it was a joke the first time I started researching this, but I did it myself and now I've probably sold a few like Travis Scott sneakers and a few Yeezys and a few limited release off-whites and stuff. Crazy. Crazy how you can make a profit on this stuff. But in the meantime, it's not just about this reselling for me. It's more about getting a unique shoe that not many people have. I just like having unique pieces of art or just foot art, if you will. I like having unique sneakers that not many people have. It's just cool. Honestly, I've learned a lot about sneakers in the process. So basically, if you sense a common trend here, I, I think of things in my mind and then I just do a ton of research and I become interested in it and I learn everything I can about it and it becomes a new hobby, which I guess is like the definition of hobby, but anyways. So the last and final hobby I have outside of medicine is photography and videography. So it all started back with Instagram because as you noticed, the Instagram game has changed a lot over the last couple of years. It used to be we take a little picture on our cell phone, which I got a new one by the way, finally. Take a little picture on your cell phone, post it to your story, post it to your Instagram page, no big deal. Throw some terrible filter on it and people are like, oh, great photo. But now it's like all these photographers are using these super high-end, multi-thousand dollar cameras, posting insanely high definition Instagram pics and of, of crazy locations. If you're not on that caliber, people just don't wanna look at it anymore. It's crazy. Everybody has become this crazy photo critic. Honestly, like I said before, I saw these nice photos and I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can take those nice photos. So I bought a camera, started learning how to use manual cameras and how to shoot manually, adjusting the aperture, the shutter, the ISO, all that stuff. And it's a lot harder than it looks, I will say, but like anything, more practice you do, the better you become at it. And some of my photos I've taken way back in the day are absolutely atrocious. And then I made the jump from Instagram to YouTube, which is a whole nother ball game because video editing is like way over my head. I feel like it's a lot more complicated than just a still picture. Well, it is more complicated, but videography and learning how to shoot certain shots and how to get the right shot and right timing and video is just way harder and it's a way different animal. And 
After shooting over 100 videos now on my channel, I've learned a lot from it and I'm still learning every single day and it's fun to me. And also similar to that is the editing side of videos. I think it's fascinating to learn how to edit. I've edited almost all of my videos with the exception of a few of the last videos in which an editor has done for me. But learning how to edit is, it was like a super fun process for me. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of skill, but the better you become at it, it's just fun. I don't know, I, I can't really describe it. Video editing is tough, so is photography. But it intrigues me about the possibilities you can do with both of those. I love the creative process that you can apply to photography and video editing. And I think that's why I love the social media, YouTube, and Instagram platforms for those reasons. It's just the creative process and, and being a creator. I love it. It's very similar to being in medicine and being in my field, interventional radiology, because a lot of times plan A and plan B don't work. And a lot of times you have to get creative when finishing a procedure. So that is it for me. Those are my five hobbies that I enjoy outside of medicine. Those are just a few of my hobbies. I have plenty. And I think it's important for you to get some hobbies outside of your work, whether you're in medicine or whatever field you're in. At the end of the day, life is too short just to go to work. You have to have some fun outside of work because that's the only way to enjoy life to the fullest. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, or if you love any of those hobbies that I enjoy, let me know in the comments below. So as always, make sure you smash that like, subscribe button, follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok, and I'll see you all on the next video.